Share Routes, which is this mapping platform, has been helping some really interesting community level information to be collected that can be fed into planning processes. And that's sort of at the level of the intersection of the block, what's working, what's not working. The planners can take on board and use alongside what they're hearing in public interest. So we've been doing these maps all over the place. Um, the, um, skipping through some of these sort of concepts we talked about. I guess there are sort of five rules that we, we try and ask people when, when they talk about using um, an interactive map to collect information. So you know, what are you trying to collect? Is it existing conditions? Is it what you're looking to see? Uh, sort of aspirational content? Um, are you mapping on existing assets? Like are you going to put in a layer of parcels and ask people to click and add data? Or are people free to form to put points anywhere they want on the map? Who are you trying to engage? Um, are you doing a map in English? In the case of the shuttle pilot program that San Francisco was collecting information on recently, you're doing Spanish. Um, maybe think a little laterally. Does it make sense to use a map, or should you try to use something more visual? We're looking at using Google Street View to collect a lot of data in communities where um, maybe people aren't so familiar with looking at maps, which is basically everyone who's not a planner. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to promote your map? So if you have a map and you're asking people to come and put information on it, how do they find out about it? And we've been really lucky to collaborate with um, some, some very good firms who do a great job of outreach. This is some work that Interface Studio did, um, the boxcar race, uh, to, to celebrate the project and um, get a really good turnout to probably need it. You can collect a lot of information on the map, and again, as I think we have explored today, what do you turn it into? Um, we try and help the people we work with sort of get a sense of what's coming in on their maps, so sending them daily summaries by emails, giving them a sort of dashboard view of what's happening with their project. Um, but you've got to think about, you, know, you can collect an enormous volume of information, I think we'll probably come back to this in our discussion, but what are you going to do with that information? How do you meaningfully close the loop on, on the participation. And that brings me to my fifth, um, kind of, I guess, rule of thumb or question to ask, which is, you know, what happens next? You get people engaging on this map, you get hundreds of, of people giving their thoughts, pouring out their, their input, responding to each other. What do you do? How do you follow up? We're experimenting with sending people little, um, sort of, I guess, prompt <coughs> emails after they've got involved and trying to keep people engaged beyond just a, you know, a one-time interaction. So, who, what, promo, insights next. Uh, it has a great acronym, what, PIN. <laughs> um, next time you think about uh, collecting community information, think to yourself, what, PIN. <laughs> um, and then just one, one minute on an example of, of where these kind of maps are making a real impact. Um, one of the exciting things about the tools we build at OpenPlans is that they're all open source, so these other people can take them and use them. We do a lot of work to encourage people to reuse our tools without involving us, and this is an example of that. Um, this is a, a community group in Brooklyn, in New York, who've been working on street safety. And this is a, um, a vigil for a kid who was killed on the sidewalk um, by a driver who um, drove off the sidewalk and ran this kid over. And this was the sort of tipping point for a group of parents to get together and say that they're really unhappy with the status quo of traffic violence and they'd like to see uh, police enforcement be done differently. So rather than just going to the police meetings um, and expressing this valid concern, they decided to get some data. So they used the share about map to go annotate intersections, locations where they didn't feel safe. Um, I can show you this up with the kind of the before. But the key thing is that they turned these into print maps. And so they used all of these tools, all of this technology we've been talking about, to ultimately put information on a piece of paper and then go sit down with the police briefing and talk about changing enforcement. So each of the dots on the map here are places where people don't feel safe on the street. This is not where people have been hit or where there's been some sort of um, city data set that's really important. This is entirely perceptual, but it's where people want to walk and they can't. 
And this information is being used by the police commanders to move where they do enforcement, where they give out violations. And so it's this amazing story that in just a couple of months they've been able to use this tool, collect this data, turn it into these very simple maps, not particularly attractive, but very simple, and take those and then get a change in where enforcement is done. 